This episode brought to you by healthwithdronetech.com. Check out this special offer for my viewers. Studies show that the adult body produces 10% less collagen every decade. If you're over 40, that should terrify you. Collagen is the glue that holds our bodies together. This is why I highly recommend healthwithdronetech.com. I've noticed that I look younger, have fewer wrinkles, and have more energy since taking my multi-collagen. My skin specifically looks and feels so much firmer. Learn more by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com. Furthermore, you'll get 51% off your first bottle if you order today, plus a 60-day money-back guarantee. Welcome back, everybody. Yesterday, I reported in my community tab about a New York Times propagandist named Katie Brenner and how she tweeted out a call for the government to get this, begin labeling Trump supporters, quote, enemies of the state. Today's January 6th select committee underscores the America's current essential national security dilemma. Work to combat legitimate national security threats now entails calling a politician supporters enemies of the state. As Americans, we believe that the state power should not be used to work against a political figure or a political party, even though that's exactly what's been going on. But what happens if a politician seems to threaten the state? If the politician continues to do so out of office and his entire party supports that threat? Just a total straw man right there because for one, there was no attack and Republicans don't support any sort of threat that doesn't exist. This dilemma was unresolved by the Russian probe and two impeachments with many Republicans denying the reality of January 6th attack. I don't doubt that January 6th to me will resolve it either. That leaves it up to voters, making it even more essential free and fair access to the polls. Weird, a so-called journalist who sounds exactly like a member of the Democrat party, not to mention the CCP. And many people in the comments, including me, suggested that she could easily be a Chinese agent who infiltrated our media. There's more than a few examples of that possibility scattered all throughout our media and on Twitter itself. There was a reporter in the the press pool during the Trump administration from a Hong Kong based news outlet and it turned out she was a CCP agent when Trump called her out about it the media went after him are you cooperating with I don't China know. who are you working for China do you I'm work not, for China or are you with a newspaper who are you with Hong Kong Phoenix TV who owns that China it's is it owned by China Hong Kong. no is it owned by the state no it's not it's a private owned company okay good okay Elijah Schaefer discovered a CCP agent posing as an American doctor from San Francisco who also just happened to get a blue check mark from Twitter the exact day he created the account. So yeah, there's more than a few reasons to believe that this is way more widespread than people realize. Mind you, it's not so much that these people are Chinese, it's the fact that the propaganda they're spreading sounds suspiciously like what comes from the CCP. Clearly intended to sow division and warfare amongst Americans, which our Democrat party and their state media are apparently willing to go along with. There's a reason China sends all of its spies to the San Francisco Bay Area. Well, lo and behold, this Twitter user, DJ Calligraphy, discovered that she used to be a freelance reporter for a straight up CC propaganda publication. Check this out. From Kate Brenner's bio on the New York Times website, she straight up admits she covered Wall Street in Silicon Valley. She's been a magazine writer and a columnist. Early in her career, she wrote for the Beijing Review. And since last fall, she's been based in San Francisco for Bloomberg Review. San Francisco, you don't say. Well, it turns out that according to the US State Department, the Beijing Review is a straight up foreign mission of China. It says it right there. In this case, they are effectively controlled by the government of the People's Republic of China the CCP. She since deleted the original tweet and posted a new one saying, I deleted unclearly worded tweets regarding the January 6th committee hearing. So yeah, not a lot to say about this story right now. It'll be interesting to see if it actually comes up in the media or if the New York Times actually says anything about it. I doubt very seriously she'll lose her position because let's face it, the Democrat Party and the CCP are essentially allies at this point. All right, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for checking it out and I'll see you all next time.